Hello everyone, welcome back again. So in this video, we'll be starting with normalization. We have discussed how to design, how to model the database, right? In our previous two videos, we have seen two models to design the database, that is relational and ER model. Now the question is, how can we come to know that the design, the schema that we develop is correct, is perfect or not, right? So then normalization comes into picture. So what is normalization, how it can help to design a good database, all these questions we answer in this video. So without further delay, let me share my screen and then we'll start. So the very first thing is normalization. What is normalization? So normalization, it is the process of removing redundancy is the process of removing redundancy from a database design and making your design better. Better here just means less redundancy. Okay, so normalization, it is the process of removing redundant data from a database design. Now the question would be, then what is data redundancy and why should we avoid it? So data redundancy means one data is repeated at multiple places. Right? So that means you have similar data at multiple places. Okay, that is data redundancy means repetitiveness of data. So what are the issues with redundancy, with repetitiveness of data. If data is repeated multiple times, what is the issues that are created? The very first one is, it creates wastage of space. Of course, wastage of space would be there, right? Multiple times we are repeating the same data. So the wastage, the storage is, the space is waste. Then, then redundant data, it creates some other problems as well, some other issues as well. Along with the wastage of space, it creates some other issues as well. They are called anomalies. So anomalies just means issues. So what are the issues that are created? What are the issues that are created due to bad database design? So the very first thing that we'll discuss here is anomalies. What are the different issues which are created due to bad database design? If your database design is bad, what are the different issues it lead to? Okay, so anomalies are it further categorized into three subtopics. The very first one is insertion anomaly. Okay, so to understand insertion anomaly, let's take an example. Let's take in scalar code base. You have students table. So let me draw students table. A uh, student's table has, let's say, ID, then name, then email, batch ID, and let's say batch name. Okay, this is the schema of a student's table in Scalar. Okay, now, so now let's say this is the only table that Scalar has. Right now, this is the only data that Scalar has. Now, now. For example, Scalar wants to create a new batch. Scalar say, okay, let me create a new batch, Appler 22. Okay. Can Scalar be able to create that? Tell me your answer. Tell me your answer in the comments. All the questions that I will ask, you have to write the comments in the, uh, your answers in the comment section. Okay. So, Scalar wants to create a new batch. Does it able to create it? No. Why? Because there is going to be issue to create a new table to create a new batch why there is an issue to create a new batch unless and until there is no student in that right fine okay you will say let's create a new batch and let's add null over the student's detail okay let me add that uh, let's say this uh, batch ID is 1 and name is April 22. Okay. And student ID, uh, it's null. It's null. 
and it's null here. Now, now, can you see some issues here? Can you see any problem here? Look at this table very carefully. What are the issues with that? By writing null, what the different problems it lead to? The very first one is, can you notice here, what is the value of primary key? What is the value of primary key here? It's null. And primary key can't be null. Primary key can't be null. It's violating what? It's violating what? It's violating entity integrity constraint. Right. We have discussed all the constraints in, I think, second video. RDVMS. Right. The uh, link you will get in the description box. Do check that. So, you will see the ID have null here. And the primary key can't be null. It's violating entity integrity principle. So, the very first issue is null. Because of null, primary key can be null. So, it's the issue. Second thing is, of course, wastage of storage. By storing so much of nulls here, you are actually wasting the storage. Right? So, this is what insertion anomaly is. What is insertion anomaly? So, insertion anomaly is because of bad database design, because of bad schema design, I am not able to I am not able to insert a insert a row properly. Right? I need a lot of nulls, of course, wastage of storage, primary key can be null. So these are the different issues. So because of bad database design, I cannot able to insert a row properly. This is insertion normally. At the time of insertion, I lead it leads to certain problems. Okay. Now the second one is deletion anomaly. Okay. So again, let's take the same example and let me draw the student's table again and fill some rows. Uh, ID, name, email, batch ID, and batch name. Okay. So let's take ID 1, ABC, ABC at the rate something, then batch ID, let's say 1, April 22, then student with ID 2, BCD, BCD at the rate something, then let's say batch ID 2, name May 22, then let's say a uh, student with ID 3, CDE, CDE at the rate something, okay, then uh, let's say batch ID 1 and April 22, okay, so this is the design, this is the student state. Now, now let's say this BCD student, this BCD students decide to cancel the, cancel the program, cancel the course. Okay. Now, what is the side effect of it? If BCD, let's say, decides to cancel the course, right? You don't want to enroll in the course. So what is the side effect of this? Can you notice any side effect of this? Yes. If BCD decides to cancel the course, what happened? We have to remove this row. We have to remove this record of BCD, right? And because of that, what is deleted? What is actually removed? The batch name. Batch name, batch ID, the information of batch is deleted. Right? So, this is deletion anomaly. Deletion anomaly is, what is deletion anomaly? It says when you delete a record, when you delete a record that may contain any attributes that shouldn't be deleted. Okay. So because of deleting the student's information, I am actually deleting this batch information also. So deletion anomaly is at the time of deleting something, we are having a problem because of bad database design. When we are deleting the row, we are deleting some information, we end up deleting that attributes that shouldn't be deleted. We shouldn't want to delete the batch information, right? But we end up deleting it, okay? So due to bad database design, this anomaly, this issue occurred, that is deletion. Now, 
Now the third one is update anomaly. It's also because of bad database design. Okay, let's take the student's table example only. Then let's say ID, name, email, batch ID, and batch name. Now, let's say student 1, ABC something, batch with ID 1, April 22, so ID 2, BCD, then that's May 22, then student ID 3, CDE, then let's say one only, April 22. Let's say fourth, another student only, XYZ, something, then batch with one only, April 22. This is a design, this is a table of student. Now, now let's say I decide, a scalar decided to change the name of this batch, this April 22 batch to, uh, let's say DSA April 22. Okay. So, uh, Scalar will write a query. I'm not writing the whole query. Uh, something like that, where uh, the batch name is April 22. Change it to DSA April 22. So, after the, uh, running this query, database will change. Let's say this is changed to DSA April 22. Then, no effect on this. This is changed to DSA April 22. Now, now, here, when it changed this, due to any random issues, like your computer uh, fails, your power failure is there, any random issues created. So, because of that, your database cannot able to change this. Last one. What happens due to this? Due to this, due to random issues, power failure, computer is uh, shut down, anything, due to random failures, your database is in what is an inconsistent state you can actually see that it's an inconsistent the data is the data is not consistent in one record you have the name of the batch is april 22 and for same batch id 1 in other record you have dsa april 22 how can someone able to find out which is the exact name of this batch id right so your database is an inconsistent it's not consistent so this leads to this issue so Update anomaly is at the time of updating something. If there's a random fee, if there's anything happens, your database is not in a random, in a consistent state, right? If your batch name is not repeated here multiple times and you have a separate table for batches, right? So there you should have to update it only one time for batch ID one, update it to DSA, right? So the chances of uh, getting issues in this is very less. Right. Instead, there it is repeated n number of times. Chances are very, chances are more. Right. So, update anomaly, deletion and insertion all can arise due to bad database design, due to redundant and repetitiveness of data. So, I think these three things are clear to you. Right. So, the solution to all this is, solution to all this is normalization. So what normalization does, it basically gives you advice on how to design your database so that there will be less redundancy. And of course, it doesn't lead to this random anomalies. Okay.